Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from every part of the world you are listening to me from. I welcome you to another edition of BET series, Biologists Explain This. I still remain your biologist, your friend, Peter Sabiodun. And in this edition, we'll be looking at the concept of happiness. It's central to our lives. There are times that things go the way we wanted them. And there are times and occasions that things just don't work out the way we wanted them. How are we supposed to handle disappointments and setbacks? That's our focus in this particular edition. So let's go together. Now, in this particular edition, we'll be looking at the following. One, what is the issue of the International Day of Happiness? The issue of the happiest country in the world, the issue of suicide tendency, and the issue of managing expectations, yours and others, and then looking at the expectation and over. Now, in 2012, the first ever UN conference was held on the concept or the issue of happiness. And at that assembly, it was adopted that. The, 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 the date, March 28th every year, should be celebrated as the International Day of Happiness. That's what I agreed to. And the first ever edition of this Day of Happiness was celebrated in 2013. That's one year after it was accepted or it was passed at the UN conference the previous year. And so we want to look at the issue of the happiest nations in the world as ranked. Now the issue is, um, you are looking at the top 10, you can Google to find the other nations and we are on your own nation ranks particularly. And so what we have chronicled here are just the top 10 happiest nations in the world. Now this particular list is for 2024, so it's recent. So this is this, this, this data came from the celebration of that International Day of Happiness, okay, which was held March 2024, this particular year. So it's a recent analysis. Now we are looking at the fact that um, Finland, that you saw on the previous slide, has held on to that position as the world happiest nation for seven consecutive years. So date it back now, so it has that nation has been able to hold on to that particular position as the happiest nation. And then we are looking at we'll be looking at some things about that nation, the traits, the the habits, the lifestyles of the things as they are called. And so the issue is that it's about habits or lifestyles, things that have been ingrained or incorporated into their national psyche. Once a child is born. Remember, remember, children learn by observation, not necessarily by words. And so if a child is growing in that society, the child has had to or will have no choice than to imbibe the habits and the lifestyles that he or she met as he or she was growing. And so we are looking at the issue of what, what is peculiar to the things and their society and their conduct and lifestyles. So as you see there, a finish psychologists talked about the fact that there are certain things that things won't do. And so it means that if you look at the converse, what things will do is what others ranked lower than and things that's what they do. So let's begin to look closely at these things that things will not do. Now the first thing that things don't do is the issue of don't show and don't tell. This is about bragging. Now bragging means you are showing off your wealth or your achievement or your accomplishment. You got a good wife, you got a good car, you got a good job and so you have money to spend. It's, it's, when you show off, it, it tries to suppress other people. It's an oppression. Okay, so it creates a mentality of wanting to be like you. Others, rather than trying to live their life modestly and peacefully, because of what they've seen and particularly in these days of the social media menace and intrusion into our privacy begin to see people wanting to aspire to be what they don't know about most often what you see are pretentious lifestyles of course some are real but then why do you have to shove your achievement down other people's throats okay 
thank God for your life, but you don't have to oppress other people. So, because it creates a kind of rat race. And so, if things don't do that, whatever you have achieved, it's, it's, it's thank God for your life. I mean, you see those who are wealthy among the things, bought trains, bought public transport. They, they even ride bikes. If they've got lanes on their highways for bikes. So, you see many of them having to go to wherever they intend to go to without even bothering to have to take their car. So, the first thing is, they don't brag, they don't show off, and that does not so that does not put pressure on the other people who are not as good or as highly placed or as, as successful as others. And then the issue of being close to nature is very important. Now we are talking about global warming, the devastation of the environment, ocean level rising and flooding, and increased rate of natural disasters. Now, at the center of these disasters is the issue of man's in mass activities, felling of um, trees, for example. No matter how much you have forest, you can't replace a tree you felled easily. It takes years for a seedling to grow into a tree again. And so there are things. So and then the issue of fossil fuel burning. Of course, there are attempts now to green up the environment. You now have solar energy, things like that. So you begin to look at replacing burning fossil fuel and so the idea is that the things if you've seen a photograph of the things you see that the environment is so greened up if i when they go on holiday they go to the crumped con their country home where they just breathing the fresh air and they try to minimize the artificial things now in some so many parts of the world there's a lot of devastation where you have marble everywhere terrazzo everywhere everywhere is cemented and so rain cannot percolate into the soil perhaps most of us don't know the reason why there can be f extensive flooding in some places you have eyebrow parts of the cities being flooded because when your compound is entirely cemented okay when rain falls it doesn't percolate it cannot penetrate the soil because there's absolutely little or no soil in your compound so imagine an entire boulevard an entire precinct or an entire street where every compound because of wealth and being uh, being able to afford it everywhere just cemented so throughout the the whole street rain could not enter the soil so the rain gathers speed and begins to move on until when the rain has so much force you have what you call force the pressure pressure is force over area so when you begin to have water gathering from different compounds and premises you begin to see extensive flooding and so things have managed to curtail that menace and so it's important for us to realize that in fact if you green up your environment the more trees you have the trees have leaves and the leaves have a large surface area for photosynthesis now what do we gain from photosynthesis now when it, when when the leaves of plants carry out photosynthesis they will need to use carbon dioxide at a stage what you call the dark reaction or the light independent reaction and so by helping up to mop up carbon dioxide you are cleaning up the environment so plants remove carbon dioxide which is a very dangerous greenhouse gas which contributes to global warming and so plants also in the course of the same photosynthesis they release oxygen which enriches the atmosphere and that oxygen is what you and i breathing and so the more plants you have the heavier will be our environment and then next the issue of trust very crucial here i mean what is life without trust trust between partners or colleagues or spouses and parents and children like that we will beat our life on trust trust sustains relationships trust gives peace of mind imagine you don't have to look over your shoulder about somebody else that's going to gun you down about kidnappers that will intrude and things like that or, or robbers or any kind of invasion now before i go on you i mean united states of america dropped to 23rd in this year's ranking so you can imagine the U.S. because of the issue of killings and gun taunting, there's so much of guns everywhere in the U.S. So U.S. is not as as, as safe as one would have tried to imagine because there is the issue of no lack of trust because of the level of insecurity and of course U.S. playing the police of the world also means that 
you, you can expect a suicide bombing. The 9 11 still comes to light. We cannot forget the menace of 9 11. And so, the, the issue of trust is very important because it gives you confidence that you don't have to suspect anyone. So, there's, the level of suspicion is very low. But there was this experiment conducted, this study called Lost Wallet Experiment that was conducted by an organization in 16 cities around the world. Now, in, that, in those studies, you got 192 wallets dropped randomly at different places. And then the issue was to wait and see whether people who found the wallets will return to the owners, look for them. And surprisingly, every time it happened, 11 out of 12 wallets were returned by the fins. In fact, they sought for the owners, they looked for them until they were able to return. They, didn't, they were not bothered about what the content was. I mean, the contents were, were, were alluring, they were attractive, but they were not bothered because they have, they have this lifestyle, this habit ingrained in their mental, the national psyche, that what you have is okay. You don't have to covet what belongs to somebody else. And so, fins, the Finland nation ranked the highest in that trust. In fact, the, the, the Finns have this belief that if you forgot your purse, your laptop, or anything elsewhere, you are so sure that you will find it. Okay, you see, you see, parents leave their kids on the bus. The, the kids don't have the, to be accompanied by their parents or a, an older sibling to and from school. So the safety is very high because of trust, and that removes fear and anxiety, and that gives peace. And when you have peace. You can imagine life when you have peace of mind with that minimum, with, with, without any anxiety or with minimum fear, so to say. And then the issue of work-life balance is important. Work is scheduled for, in the, for the things to have peace of mind. I mean, they don't joke with their holidays or leave like that. And so the, the issue is that even when a, a, a woman who was pregnant, has gone to labor now when she's nursing the baby she gets 160 days or of leave and she's paid that's about five months five months of not having to go to work and then you are being paid in fact she's paid for the first year for the whole year after she just delivered okay she's been paid throughout imagine and then the father too is paid fathering allowance to assist the wife throughout the period so you can imagine children are raised in, in, in a home of trust and comfort because the leadership of Finland, they've understood the issue of childhood raising. I mean, it's easier to manage a child than to manage a damaged adult. So you have these functional homes now. You've got children whose backgrounds are faulty and they grow into very dysfunctional adults who, who can cause menaces and destructions in the society who go into crime because they were not raised properly. I mean, one cannot remove the place of the home in a good society. So we look at the fact that corruption is very low. Like I was saying, the things work with job satisfaction because they know their bosses have their backs. The bosses don't look for how to victimize you and things like that. And so bosses take care of their employees and that gives them peace of mind, job satisfaction. They work with joy and satisfaction. And so that reduces the level of corruption because you don't have to covet what belongs to another person. When you even got extra money on the side, what are you going to use it for? Who are you going to show off to? And so in Finland, in that society, the level of corruption is very low. Even the law enforcement agents are, are, more, are highly motivated. So there's no need to want to have to get kickbacks or any kind of inducement because bribery will, will cloud your judgment. It will make you become a bigot. You become biased in the things you have to do in carrying out your duties and your responsibilities. When we come to the issue of high social support. A lot of suicide tendencies have been tied to insecurity. I mean, the issue of 
not having anybody to share your your fear with the, nobody you can trust if you if you fell short of the site's expectation or your parents expectation or you, you if a lady got raped for example can she be confident and bold to talk to, about it to a parent or to colleagues or to the law enforcement agents without being derided or made fun of if things were to go wrong let's say you even messed up okay nobody is immune to doing wrong i mean you can mess up on an occasion emotional issues can arise okay so if that kind of thing happened and you felt remorseful who can you go to for example that will not embarrass you that will not leak the secret in in finland this is not so everybody supports everybody so you i mean there's this interpersonal relationship that that brings comfort to everybody so when things go wrong i mean people have emotional supports they can share their information with people knowing fully well that nobody will embarrass them when such things happen so when people hear people come around people can bring lunch packs people bring them um, breakfast people come around and spend time with you to comfort the person just imagine that togetherness it, it, it creates a closely knitted society where everybody has a sense of belonging and there is this peace that comes with living in such kind of environment where you don't have to think that somebody is looking at you with a kind of pers perception or kind of what the hell that kind of thing so you just leave your peace of mind you, even when you go through stuff that are bad experiences you, you still have your head eye not your head bowed in shame and embarrassment and disgrace and of course there's a freedom to make decisions parents don't load their own ideas over their child or their word they are supportive they let the children make their own decisions of course you may have to come in and support and advise based on experiences and parenting is not about loading your own opinion over your child you have to let your child to grow part of life is making mistakes if you if a child grows up being shielded from life experiences such children have problems as adults so there are things that they could have learned from when they were growing that would have shaped their mentality so that when you made mistakes at a lower stage you're a better adult so shielding your child from some kinds of experiences may be detrimental i said may because it may not be in all circumstances but most often from researches if children are shielded from some kinds of life experiences they are not able to handle failure or disappointments when they grow older i've seen students in my own experiences who cannot even cross the road because it has been driver bringing them to and fro and things like that some of them are never have to watch their clothes themselves there are things that i mean because they fear their parents they hide information so when things even go wrong with them they don't talk to parents i mean you can imagine parents if, if trying to impose the, the opinion that you must study a particular course for example i mean even if the child does not have the capacity to cope with the requirement you want your child to study medicine can your child cope with have to study after having to study and cram so many things like that your child is not good in math you want him or her to study engineering so those kind of things like that in finland this doesn't happen that children are free to be who they want to be of course with the supports of the parents and adults around them and of course finland has been found to have a very egalitarian society what do we mean by being egalitarian it means that there is equity there's fairness nobody feels oppressed or intimidated by anybody else so in all kinds of relationships you have equity even couples they share responsibilities i mean i know this happens in different there's nothing on this list it does not happen in other societies but it is more common the percentage occurrence of these things on the list they are higher because it's an agreed issue individuals can do things on their own in other nations but it is a collective decision among the things that this is how they should run their homes this is how the society should be run and maintained it's egalitarian so nobody has nobody has a feeling of being cheated so to say and so if you look at that you don't feel inferior to anybody the issue of complex doesn't arise 
at all. In fact, you see their leadership being very, very responsible. The gap between the halves and the halves not is very narrow, not wide, not large. You see even the, the, the leaders who govern, okay? You will see your leaders riding the bikes on the bus. You can approach your leaders in, in an open manner. You don't need to go through protocols. Many intermediaries before you will see those who govern you. Such kind of things, access to leaders give you the it gives you this issue of an open society. And so that is what is lacking in many, many nations. In Finland, you see that issue of fairness and openness and just. Okay, the society is just so everybody feels I am okay because I have fairness in whatever may happen to me and that is very very important it goes a long way in helping the citizens and this more the most important issue i want to discuss now is the issue of education in finland now finland is ranked very highly on the ladder of educational attainment now did you have free education from pre-primary what is called nursery kindergarten is among other nations up to the university level just imagine there are leaders who try to paint the picture that it is not possible to run free education of course one can say that how many are they in finland what is the population of finland but if you look at it if leaders cut off part of the things they enjoy as leaders if the privileges and the allowances that leaders collect for example and if those things are cut off and then those things trickle down so that the excesses are now channeled into maintaining facilities, creating things that will, I mean, just imagine amenities that the citizens can enjoy. That's what we are trying to say here in this context. And so if leaders are sacrificial, the excesses can be used to the benefit and the advantages of the citizenry. That is the idea here. And so there's no tuition fee, so parents don't have to bother, because, not, not, because, not that they are not responsible, but leaders take care of other aspects of the lives of their child because education is accessible and, and because it's paid for by the government, nobody has no reason, no reason not to want to go to school. So there's a very high literacy level in Finland, very, very high literacy level and so but of particular essence is to refer to the fact that the educational curriculum or let's say curriculum that being practiced in finland emphasizes life skill training it's not just about acquiring degrees in many societies individuals keep acquiring degrees when they are jobless so you finish your first degree you didn't get a job you went back to school and then you got your master's and you went back to do PhD, in all of these instances, you cannot create anything. You cannot even start your job. Now, it's becoming clearer now from even before the COVID-19 era that jobs are, are disappearing. So the world is becoming more and more creative. You have apps now, you have software that can do what human brains can do. And so it's becoming clear that creativity is important. So the Finnish educational structure is such that individuals are being taught real life challenges, how to cope. If you have not watched our videos on what school won't teach you, please get the two parts series of that. The two parts series taught in the issue of, look, the life outside school is far different. You may be topping your class in the school, when you get out there on the street, the world is entirely different. So we all have to train our child or world to knowing that topping the class does not mean that you will succeed in life. So please get the video, at least the first part of that video titled, What School Won't Teach You. You will see a chronicle of individuals who are written off in school but who are very successful in life because school that doesn't teach you how to cope with life is making you a failure in waiting. So what's the summary of what we have been saying so far about Finland? Their success or they are being rated as the happiest nation has got nothing to do with their scientific prowess, which you see in nations like China, like um, like US, like um, Germany, like like um, even Japan, okay, even Russia. It's not about advancement in technology, but it's due to certain values, values, values that they hold dearly because you can't be happy alone. So there's respect, there's affection, there's trust, and there's the issue of trying to 
enjoying nature because it's, it's been found by research by it, by that when you have peace of mind, there's a way nature encourages you, nature inspires you. If you look at the early scientists, early, early philosophers and, and socialists like that, they, they lived in environments where they were inspired by their environment. And so if you try to do this more often, there will be more breakthroughs, there will be more inspirations that will better the life of everyone. And still on the issue here, happiness is not your choice. You can't be happy alone. No matter how good you are, if you have menacing neighbors, if you have very annoying uh, colleagues, it can be a problem. I mean, there are people that will just annoy you, frustrate you, just piss you off. And so, if you look at this, happiness is a collective consideration. If you all agree to the fact that these are the norms, these are the standards, and there are measures to put everybody who steps out of the mall in check. Because usually, evil when spreads, things go wrong when those who did those things in the past went unpunished. Things will keep thriving. Okay, Evil will keep growing because those who have done those things before, they went unpunished. It is retribution and punishment, okay, or trying to apply the armor of the law as hard as it can that will put people in check. So people conform, not because they want to conform, but because there are things that put everybody in check. The natural human has a tendency to do evil. If everybody was not caught, everybody can sin, everybody can do things. If you know you will not be caught, you and I might not be as good as we are. But the fear of retribution, the fear of being caught and being embarrassed is what puts most of us in check. So, if you have a collective consideration, which I mean, you have the social aspect, you have the political aspect. Okay, so if you have such environment where everybody collectively agrees that other people's interests are as important as yours, meaning putting others first, of course, you don't have to do that at the detriment of your own peace of mind and your own comfort and of course people that are around your spouse, your children and your loved ones, for example. but there is a social and political angle to being happy because you can't be happy alone. In my own country, my country is ranked one hundred and second on the happiest country ladder. That is very laughable. A country so blessed and so richly endowed, being ranked that low out of the top 50, out of the top 100, to be ranked one hundred and second on the happy country index is an injustice to a country so blessed like Nigeria. So we turn to a very important issue, which is the, the problem of suicide. Now, suicide tendencies happen when people have lost hope in life, when they feel that there's nothing more to live for. And so we are looking at the issue of suicide and it's defined as self-harm that results in death. Of course, the issue of sometimes some people want to attempt suicide and they were rescued, so to say. I had an uncle that died a couple of years ago who first attempted suicide by taking over a dose of some drugs. First friends came and they broke into the house and it was rushed to the hospital and it was detoxified. But the problems he faced were too many. And so he still felt, because he was a big man, and then he felt he was embarrassed and, and he didn't feel any need to leave. And so he, he ended up eventually hanging himself. Very, 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 I mean, very, very wonderful man. I can never forget that person. Very nice, very wonderful, very hardworking. But he had, was surrounded by so many terrible friends who were just taken from him and never really gave him good advice. So he was owing banks and things like that. And he had issues that eventually pushed him to the brink of having to kill himself by hanging himself eventually. And so suicide tendencies are very real. And so you begin to see that from survey that suicide is the second leading cause even among teenagers aged from 14 to 19. Now you are going to be asking what will put a child what will make a child that has not seen so much of life or that, has not, that does not have any kind of responsibility to, to want to commit suicide? I have a friend that, that often says that, look, that some of us are adults in age, just in terms of chronological age, but a lot of children are adults in experience. Let me just say that again. Maybe that's your own observation. 
that some children are adults in experience, though young in age. While some of us who are older, we are older only in age. We've not had the kind of experiences that some children have had. They are children, they are daughters who, are, who the fathers are sleeping with. They are girls who have been raped and they cannot talk. There are abuses everywhere, bullying among children. So sometimes, and there are people who have seen things that they cannot talk, and those experiences are haunting them, and they are fearful. They don't know who to talk to. So most often, children bear the brunt of the society's injustice and evil. And because most societies train children to shut up, to respect elders, not to talk, because they cannot voice out, they die slowly. So this is very important to realize that children around you, even your own children, can be dying slowly. So we'll be looking next at suicidal tendencies and the warning signs. So causes of suicide, just a couple of them, they are longer than this. You can add to the list and then you can send your comments and, and, uh, in the comment section after the video to let us hear from you, your own contribution and your observations. Now, there is no particular singular fact that somebody can tie suicide to. It's, a, it's, it's the issue of several factors, several variables. It's a combination of several things. And so, most, but at the center of it all is the stressful. There's, there's the mental torture. So, there's the psychological aspect of committing suicide. When the person's mindset is that there's no more hope in life. So there's anxiety, there's anger, so losses, loss of a loved one that you are so close to, loss of job. You had a highly paid job and then you are living a kind of life and you thought if you lost that job, what's going to happen? Or you lost any part of the body. You, let's say you were amputated, for example. I mean, just imagine any kind of incapacitation or limitation can make people to be on the brink of, of life and want to just give it up because imagine you are now the I mean, to somebody is cute, for example, or somebody is blind, having to depend on people to go to the restroom. If you can't do this yourself anymore, to, to toilet, to clean up, to bathe. You can't, I mean, just imagine things that you cannot do. Any kind of incapacitation may want somebody to die. That's why in some cases you have what you call euthanasia, mercy killing, helping somebody who has a terminal disease to die because he or she will die anyway. There are cases where individuals have terminal diseases and what doctors will do is to place the person on medical procedures or medications to just leave an extra couple of weeks or months the person will still die anyways and the family can just think of look we are spending money this person will die of course there are issues of religious aspects where you have faith i mean faith heals so, so a lot of people have recovered through their faith in god because whether we like it or not, whether you accept it or not, there is this aspect of spiritual in everything in life. There are things that we cannot explain with our own wisdom. Things happen in life that we cannot explain. So we cannot take away the issue of the supernatural. And that's why most of us pray. We pray because we see that there are things that the supernatural can do and rectify. When, the, when, when man's knowledge ends, that is where the supernatural begins. So you see those who are smart and intelligent, professors still dying. Okay, so that means that there is a limit to knowledge that man has. Knowledge can't take you far. So whether you believe it or not, there is the supernatural in everything that affects humanity. And so we are looking at the warning signs quickly. Okay, the warning signs include sudden change in behaviors when the person that you or you are familiar with used to who was vibrant very playful used to watch football with you used to play around on guard with the guys and friends and suddenly he or she has become a recluse doesn't go out anymore even when you're talking the person avoids eye to eye contact and the person just just keeps to himself or herself the moment you begin to see this change in behavior begin to probe and begin to raise alarm about it and then of course the, the extreme is when the person becomes irritable the person becomes very very angry at the slightest provocation and of course the one that we should pray against is the issue of having to go into drug addiction because drug abuse is usually very difficult to treat if you watch our video on addiction you will see that we explained from the point of view of biology 
and the body's physiology, how teenagers are very difficult to treat when they are old, unlike adults. There's, there's this part of the brain called the reward system that maintains this problem and so we have to try to explain so get the video on addiction is very is very informative so that we don't drive this issue so because we try to explain the concept of addiction there and so when a child or anybody goes into addiction is a, is a worst case scenario here now because it makes it worse it complicates the issue and so before it gets to this level of addiction and drug intake please let's look at this warning signs once you see any change in the lifestyle of your friend, your colleague, your child, and anybody you are familiar with or close to, please, whether if you may not be able to handle it, you may not be sure, but at least take steps to ask the person. If the person is, is defensive and aggressive, talk to other people. And please be sure that the person's, that stage of that person's life is not because of a suicide tendency, but other factors. So we ask the question, can suicide be prevented? Yes, it can. And so how do you do that? It's simple. Like we said previously or earlier, frequent communication. Be, be close. Even when people are recovering from diseases, from sicknesses, I mean, there's something called DOT, D-O-T-S, that WHO advocates when somebody who has a condition like TB and all those terrible diseases. DOT means that, it's called DOT means direct observation treatment short course where you've got medical personnel friends relations people come near to encourage the person imagine having to be in the hospital or to, for eight months to a year on medication because you are recovering from a particular disease imagine ordinary anti-malaria drug is not sitting to some people so imagine having to take a regimen of drugs regimen means so many drugs combined several times in, in a day for about a year to recover it can be very very devastating and lonely the journey can be very long and tedious to bear alone so that means that people close to that individual who is recovering they come there and try to cheer the person up to hasten and to help in the recovery process so communication is key you've got to get close to the person some people have had issues they messed up they felt sad they are feeling remorseful and they need help at that stage otherwise you will lose them and they will sink into the abyss of depression so we come to the issue of suicide now suicide rate which country is ranked as the, the, the nation with the highest suicide rate unfortunately is the Sotho, an african nation and so we are going to be looking at just a couple of things about the Soto that that attribute those things are that, that this issue of ranking of the Soto is attributable to. Now, if you know, if this nation is ranked as number one in the world for both genders, what are the factors? Now we come to the issue of this nation has history of long cases of HIV AIDS. Of course, AIDS will lead to loss of life because in that country they don't have advanced technology. Let me say that they don't have health care. Okay, because according to WHO, health okay, health care must be affordable, accessible, and available. So even if it's available, can you afford it? This society is very poor. Most individuals can afford medications, even though its treatment is even subsidized by WHO, the state can't afford it. So there is a lot of deaths and losses here and there. Low employment, poverty is very high and rife. And so you see a lot of psychological problem pushing people to the brink of societal tendency. So it's just a matter of just to use the Soto as an example of how a whole society can be depressed. And you can have many people, many residents of that kind of society having to lose, lose, lose hope in life. So we come to the issue of expectations because at the center of disappointment in life is the issue of expectation. And expectation refers to an individual's belief in the outcome of any event. It can be marriage, it can be business, it can be anything. 
you add it all in your mindset that everything that the way you plan it to work out the way you saw it and things like that and unfortunately most times we are myopic in our way of assessing things we sometimes we don't say total picture even sometimes we are driving there's something called a blind spot you didn't see that person approaching and things like that that person is crossing the road that bike man and things like that and so you didn't consider that rain may fall and you're having a party but then you consider the other people's biases you just looked at an event or event from your point of view and then you took that step and then the remorse or, or sadness or disappointment came in eventually so there can be problems with expectation so it's very important to manage our expectations which is what we turn our attention to next Now we are discussing the issues regarding expectations and then there are your own expectations and your expectation of other people okay so often we can become too attached to our expectation and become blinded by other factors that are really staring us in the face that guy you are wrong fella you are misbehaving you are on the wrong track and things like that because you are just short-sighted and you just held on to that. Some people are so fixated in the way they see things, they think that other people are not, and everybody must just accept what they have as their own mindset. Now, so it can, it can make you to become proud. So because when you want to do things, do you seek counsel? Even the Bible says that in the multitude of counselors, in the multitude of counselors, you don't lack help. So if you ask this person, what do you think? What, you'd be so surprised that what you never even thought of, all that would make clear to you that come, that thing you're trying to do, have you considered this? So trying to hear from others doesn't make you stupid. If you're even smart, when you use other people's idea, I mean, it was, was it Galileo said that term, if, if I've been able to see far, it's because I've been able to ride on the shoulder of giants. I mean, imagine, it's so easy to use other people's idea to make your life better why struggle when you can have a consortium of people around you when you can leverage friends colleagues and even books in these days of search engine in, in this advent of ai you can you can get anything so before you take any step try to seek as many of course some things are urgent you may not have enough time but most often let's plan ahead so that we can have a happier life and with minimum disappointments and failures of our expectations and one of the issues about this concept of expectation is that it can make you to become very ungrateful there are people who don't see anything good about themselves they've got to always compare themselves with others oh i don't have this others have married all my friends have married and i'm the only one i mean it's a lie please go to the hospital and find out that many people who are finer richer better more connected who have all the degrees in life and they are bound on the bed i mean they are praying seriously that god will take away their wealth and their beauty and give them health just imagine life without eyes imagine life you are bound to the bed forever you can't go anywhere because you are incapacitated so anytime you felt or you that idea comes that you are inferior to other people yes you may not have achieved what you wanted but you are also you, you, you have come far because sometimes when you don't see your life the way you should to be grateful you begin to think that you have achieved nothing and sometimes you also look down on people that god used to help you our journey through life involves many people many people contribute to our journey in life so when you begin to feel that you have achieved nothing you are trying to look down you are trying to rubbish the efforts of people that got used to bring you as far as you have come so it's important to have a lifestyle of gratitude of course not complacency but that is appreciate where you have achieved, where you have attained to appreciate the journey celebrate where you are on your way to where you are going to let me say that again celebrate how far you have come celebrate your achievement and your accomplishment so far and hope for more or at least when you take a step stabilize and then move on but don't run down don't rubbish your efforts and others all because of having to compare yourself with other people and so it is it's a found by research that when you are grateful you have peace of mind because you don't compare you don't convert and you just not that you are complacent but you see life with a 
particular positive outlook that if I can come this far, I can say accomplish more. Now there is the issue of unrealistic expectations at the height of the issue of um, hangover and suicidal tendencies. Now at the time of Michael Jackson's death, is the example I want to use to illustrate the issue of the expectation of the society and the pretense that we have. Michael Jackson was built to perform a series of comeback concerts. Okay, that was in 2009. Now the concerts were built for the O2 Arena. Everybody knows O2 Arena now, very popular for hosting many artists. Now, one of those days of Riazza, Michael Jackson got to the venue of Riazza at about 6 p.m. or there about complaining of laryngitis, voice box issue, got back to his arm um, 12.30 the following morning and of course his, jo his doctor Coral Mori was around to attend to him because unknown to the public, remember we are discussing the issue of unrealistic expectations, the public was expecting Michael Jackson to perform the way he used to when he was younger. Now this is a man now in his 50s, I'm sure in Michael Jackson's closet, every time he felt about the fact that all the concerts venue were sold out, sold out. Everybody was expecting. In fact, the concerts were tagged this is it. The concerts were meant to launch Michael Jackson back to limelight. He had withdrawn from the western area because he had cases of pedophile and things like that. So he has gone to hide in other countries away from the west. So, where, so the concerts were meant to launch him back to, to the public view and then but um, he has had cases of insomnia, he couldn't sleep, and he was used to taking pills to sleep. But on that particular fateful night, the doctor Murray gave him all these kind of drugs and injections, but Michael still couldn't sleep. And doctor, according to his deposition, he kept saying that um, Michael kept asking him for the milk. The milk is the, the name given to a particular drug called Profafil. Now that drug is used as an analgesic, okay, not analgesic actually, it's a, as a, used in anesthesia for very powerful um, um, surgeries. And so he was asking for that particular powerful drug for, for him to sleep because unknown to the public, he couldn't sleep. So Propofol was administered, so apparently the overdose made Michael to sleep and never woke up again. And so the issue of the social media, the expectation of people and things like that, I'm just using Michael Jackson here. There's a case of Bob Risky also. The social media is awash with cases of unfulfilled expectations because people did not know that Michael was dying slowly of the fact that he was aging and he couldn't meet the people's expectation anymore. Look at the photograph of young Michael and the Michael that was going to die eventually so please don't live your life by people's expectations set your own standards and live by them and so the issue of expectation means that you have not gotten it right yet see the diagram that that diagram the figure in the background you see the issue of arrows being shot arrows here means that people your effort my efforts so if you have not gotten this right sometimes it may just mean that you need a change of approach a change of strategy failures don't mean that you are a failure a failure is an event so let's always separate event from the person parents teachers tutors school owners it's important to realize that a crime is an event the person who was a criminal today okay or in the past can still change so don't ruin a personality because of an event of misbehavior or misdemeanor and so sometimes we have very unrealistic expectation parents have this for their child spouses the husband can think that my wife should do this wife thinks my husband should do this after all he should know what i mean that is Sometimes you are the one thinking that that is how things should turn out. You didn't see the other person's opinion. So at the center of disappointments is the issue of very unrealistic expectations. And then we are looking at an author, okay, Christine Hassel, that wrote a book. And I'm quoting one of the sentences in that book. And she was saying that some of our greatest suffering happens when our realities don't match up with our expectations and so we have this issue of regret we have heartache we have things like that so many things go wrong because 
we didn't really plan well. Now, my Tyson is being quoted there because look at the tattoo here. Of course, the tattoo here is now being called hangover tattoo. So there's this issue of expectation hangover because he lost his world title to somebody that was only ranked in China and there were events leading up to the loss of his title. I mean, when Matthias was growing up, he was into crime, God last any and things like that. He was just on a street guy. And this man, Kos Damato, picked him up, groomed him, and he became a world champion at a very young age of 20. And so he, he was knocking out people and maybe pride and arrogance setting. It was, a, I mean, the, 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 the media made him and things like that. But the world can raise you, the world also will make you crash. And so when he lost Kos Damato as a benefactor as a foster father he, he was depressed that was the kind of stage not to fight so i'm sure he was not in the right senses the right frame of mind so he lost the title imagine somebody else who has been knocking people out now being knocked down himself so when he was trying to come back to go back to the ring to recover and things like that maybe he thought of okay so inside he was fearful i think but outwardly, he wanted to look fearsome, so to say, to scare the opponents now. Because somebody who has fallen before would find it difficult to gather strength to move on. So he had this tattoo that he had to just use as just maybe to look bold. But inside, the fear was there because he, he lost when he didn't even think it could happen. So because people rated him that it can never happen. The same thing happened between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali in the rumble in the jungle when everybody thought uh, Ali would be knocked down silly, beat him seriously by George Foreman, but it didn't happen because Muhammad Ali planned very well and what the world expected to happen didn't happen. Instead, Ali won against all expectations. Again, we are looking at the concept of expectation. And so what is expectation hangover is when life's expectations, when things that we expected don't happen. It's just like somebody else who is drunk. A drunkard will have hangover when he or she wakes up. There will be headache and things like that. The person might even fall in the gutter, or slept somewhere ridiculous. And when the person wakes up, there will be anger, embarrassment and regret and things like that. And so for how long will the person hold on to the hangover symptoms of failure to meet ease or our expectation? And so overcoming disappointments in work, love, life, and any part of our lives will be challenging without all kinds of help and support. Because when we expect things to go the way we, we, we wanted them, but they don't turn out that way, recovery can be very daunting and challenging without help. And so you sink into regret, and particularly if people around you are not helpful, it can be worse to recover. So there is something real and it is called expectation hangover but the person is digging living in regret and the person is sinking deep and the person's work is suffering the person is withdrawing from reality of life and things like that and the pressure might be setting in and so sometimes failure to meet our expectation does not mean that we are not good enough it may just be signs that we are human and we need to change strategy or the way we have been doing things either too. And so we have three um, forms or types of hangovers of expectation. One, the first is called situational expectation hangover, which is common, meaning that circumstance that you thought of did not turn out the way you wanted. And the second one is called interpersonal expectation hangover. This is common between people in relationships, spouses, boyfriend, girlfriend, and things like that, even between employer and employer, when you felt that uh, there's an abuse of your trust in that person. A lot of date rape cases are caused by, are done by by men or in males that females trusted. You have a friend that you used to visit and you think that it cannot happen. The person can drug the person and they can be gang grip. A lot of things happen when your trust is abused in a kind of relationship. So husband can abuse the wife, wife can, wife can abuse the husband and things like that because and it, it can be very difficult to recover from so because you have put so much trust in that person. And then lastly, you have the issue of your self-imposed expectation. It can be tied to pride. When you say this can't happen, that can't happen and things like that, people have feel that you deride them, you mock them, the people have issues and you look down on them. Remember, you are human. 
Nobody knows what's going to happen next. Nobody's immune to challenges. If things are good for you, thank God. But remember, you are not where you are because you are better than others. You are just lucky. Or you are favored or you are blessed. Whatever you see happen to other people can happen to you or anyone else. Nobody's immune to failure, to setbacks. Otherwise, if it's failure in marriage, look at Elon Musk and Bill Gates. If riches are alone to maintain marriages, they should not have been divorced. If beauty alone could keep marriage, then there's no way Kardashian could have been divorced by Kanye West. So there are things that we have examples that it can happen to anybody. So please don't look down on anybody. Instead, try to empathize with people when you see things go wrong with people. This quote is talking about the fact that Shakespeare says, look, expectation is out of art a because we are putting so much hope in our expectation and you see on the right you see you see the expectation fading away so sometimes we, our art aches are created by very very false and and fake expectations very unrealistic and very 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 here planned events so we are seeing that in this quote and so how do you manage expectations quickly? You have to communicate. Don't assume. Let everybody around you know what you stand for. You are doing synchronicities, what you will take, what you will not take. Don't, don't be afraid to repeat. Repeat. Say it over again. Parents, repeat to your child. Bosses, repeat to your employees. In, in any kind of relationship, set boundaries. Let the person know what you will and won't accept in this relationship. And of course, second is still managing other people, anticipate problems, okay? In business, life, try to have all the variables, all the factors consider, anticipate that things can go wrong. And so know other people's biases, understand the people that you are relating with, don't look at your own perspective alone, learn about other people. So people can mess up, always know that people can disappoint when you know that, then you have a shock absorber okay you have a fall so shock absorber for anything that can go wrong because you already know that it might happen so you don't be shocked if if, if were to happen if people disappointed you you will not be so shocked because you you probably thought it can happen anyways now, as randolph we are just looking at what nature has endowed us with as what we call feel good hormones so the acronym dose can help us to remember You've got dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Let's look at them closely, briefly. Now, dopamine is referred to as the happiness hormone. So, pleasure, happiness, and rewards, they are based on the effect of dopamine. So, please get our video on this concept here. We have a video that we, under addiction, before we ran it off, we talked about these hormones, and we talked about how we can increase the amount of these hormones in the system to get the best of them oxytocin is called the bonding hormone if you spend time with somebody else more time you spend you begin to love that person you begin to feel attracted there are people who are falling in love with people they never thought they could fall in love with because of oxytocin so watch out the more time you spend with anybody you get attracted and you can even have sex with the person you didn't plan to have sex with so Oxytocin is very important in bonding between mother and child, between boy and girl, male and female like that. And then in any kind of relationship, it is at the center of it. I mean oxytocin. Serotonin helps you to sleep. So please don't starve yourself of sleep. If you feel drowsy, take a nap in between the days and schedules. At night, try to sleep because serotonin helps you to improve. I mean, there are things that can only happen when we sleep. We discuss this in subsequent videos later. And lastly, endorphins. Endorphins are like your paracetamol, they are like your panadol or ibuprofen, helping you to manage pains. Life is full of pains. Schedules can be very painful and stressful. So apart from the drugs you may take, nature has given you endorphins to help us to manage pains and discomfort. And so you see the summary of those hormones there. Look at them at your convenience later. See, you can always play this video over and over again. And so as I end up, as round off this video, I appreciate you. Please, I want to hear your comments. What issues have you gone through? What have you had? What, had, what encounters have you had? What encounters with failure and expectations that you blame yourself for or somebody blames you for and things like that? 
You may not even have, include your name, but please let's hear your comments and observations and things like that. That let's all learn. Let's learn from life experience. Let's learn from one another and be better. So WhatsApp, email, Instagram, YouTube. I want to hear from you. And so I appreciate you joining me, listening to this all the while. And I wish you a good life. See you in the next edition. Thank you very much for listening and watching. And please like and share. Let more people listen to this video, watch it, and learn the way you have learned so that we can all live a much happier life and enjoy life more than we have enjoyed it up to now. So until we meet again, thank you for listening and watching. Bye.